my dear, dear listeners, I hope everyone is well rested after a long day of labor and laboring. All settled to take a terrifying turn down, 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 and further down, down into the rank corners of the slanted hallway. Unfortunately for you, hallways don't have corners for you to hide in. Only long, long, and even longer passages of horror to experience and traverse. Truly, you're lost in a sublime world of terror, and guess what? I just threw away the map to safety. Legally, though, I'm obliged to inform our listeners that they are indeed not literally trapped in the slanted hallway and can actually turn off the show whenever they want. We've gotten one too many letters from people complaining they're too terrified to turn off their radios. I thought it was grand, but management here says otherwise. Well, dear listeners, why don't I lighten the mood by spinning an old classic slanted hallway yarn of darkness and horror? ha <laughs> ha ha That's me laughing, if you couldn't tell. It's fun to laugh about evil. Nothing comes more evil and unfortunate than our tale tonight. Imagine this, if you will, a titan of industry brought to his knees by a foul curse of the old and wicked. George Wilberforce III is a self-made man who believes that he is in total control of his own destiny. But in the slanted hallway, destiny has a funny way of tilting on the unsuspecting, making things slightly slanted, especially in a hallway. This landed hallway. Start the story now. My heavens, Butterman! Can you look at that sight? Have you ever seen anything man made that large and beautiful? Well, sir, I did visit the pyramids in Egypt once on vacation. Ah, a bunch of rock piled up in a sandy desert built by slaves. It's nothing compared to my seven-story, 5,000-foot warehouse with the name Wilberforth painted on the side in bold letters. Also, if I were a pharaoh, I would have built a rock version of this warehouse. That way it could turn a profit and not be an eyesore for a bunch of camels. And more importantly, Butterman, who said you were allowed to have a vacation on my watch? Uh, um, you did, sir. You, you allowed the whole company to have uh, that three-day weekend once? Worst mistake I've made for this business yet. We lost valuable man-hours not constructing industrial lathes that day. I'm haunted by that lost profit, Butterman. End of the day for George Wilberforce III is all the bottom line. Now, what was that last line you wrote there in my autobiography? On the bottom? The one and only. Um, what was the last line you wrote there in my autobiography? Ha ha, well done, Butterman. You can't get any more exact than that. Now throw away that last page, it's garbage now. Because you made me repeat myself to myself. Right away, sir. Ah, excellent. Start a new chapter. How I became successful the Wilberforth method. Uh, sir, I will say, and I don't mean to editorialize, but you did title the last nine chapters with that. You're really pushing your luck, Butterman, with that mouth of yours. This chapter will be called How I Became Successful, The Wilberforce Method, Part 9, then. Uh, right, sir. Now, where was I? Don't tell me. I know exactly where I left off, and that's my secret, Butterman. I owe my success, my millions of dollars, my hilltop villa overlooking the Milwaukee Sea, my fancy sports car with side mirrors, my beautiful Croatian wife and three Croatian children. All this I owe to one thing and one thing only. An airtight memory. Butterman, I have a brain like a bear trap. Once something gets thrown in there, that memory has to gnaw its leg off to get out of my skull. Butterman, I can tell you everything dangling in my pockets right now without even looking. Right pocket, wallet with driver's license, photo of wife with children, and $200 in $1 bills. Left pocket, keys to fancy sports car and to the hilltop villa, three medium-sized pieces of lint, and, of course, bejeweled yo-yo for fun. Uh, yo-yo, sir. Haha, <laughs> got you, Butterman. I don't have my precious gem yo-yo on me. It's locked away in this safe under my desk here with the combination only I know. Besides, I don't have any time for fun. Only success. 
and nothing will get in my way to that success. I'm a man who truly is in control of my destiny, and that's definitely how I'll be remembered in history. Not for some pointy rocks in the desert. Ha ha. Ancient Egypt. What a bunch of losers. Ha ha. That's enough laughter at work for one day. Now, Butterman, hurry up and finish the rest of this chapter. I've got to drive around town showing off my wealth to my homeless brother again. Uh, uh, but, 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 sir, you only really gave me a paragraph to work with that barely fills out a page. Ah, well, fill it with some old cooking recipes or put in that one dream I told you about where I had pillows for feet. I don't know, it isn't my job to write an autobiography, Butterman. Now get to it or I'll make you work through your lunch break again. Right away, sir. Good. Now to take the executive fireman's pole to the first floor. Wee! First floor reception. And I hope everyone is working. We are, sir. Too eager. You're fired. No, oh, jeez, my pension. You did it again, George. Saving this company money incidentally. <laughs> no gray clouds for old George Wilberforce. Hey! You old woman, what are you doing to my car? Huh? Oh, no, I'm so sorry, dearie. I thought this was my fancy sports car with the mirrors on the side. I apologize. Here, let me give you a hard candy from my bag. Now, where do I keep the candy in this thing again? Oh, here. Wait, no, that's a bag of screws. I have no time for this non -wit. I remember you from when I was a child. You're my old church school teacher, Miss, Ma Miss Agnes Myerskoff. Why, you were the worst teacher I ever had the misfortune to instruct me. You couldn't remember where you put our test grades, and our entire class was held back two years because of it. Oh, my goodness, and I remember you, little Greg Tiberford the Fourth. That's George Wilberforth the Third, you geriatric. All oh, right, your gift. You're the sharpest little boy I had ever taught in my tenure at the Holy Philip Sheridan School for the Church. You organized the whole class to write letters to the superintendent to have me removed from teaching. Very bright young boy, but unfortunately, some wicked child in your class turned the school against me and got me fired from teaching. That was me. I did that. You just said that, you old woman. Oh, right. Between you and me, though, I'm pretty sure it was Tommy Yarvis who was behind it. He was always salty about me leaving him behind on that class trip to Constantinople. It's Istanbul, and I've heard enough of this. I've places to go and no time for the antics of a doddering old fool. Wait, Jorge. I know you're a busy rich man whose time is very valuable. But can you find it in your heart to help an old woman find her own fancy sports car? I know I parked it somewhere around here. Now get this in your thick little skull, Miss Myerskoff. Not only will I not help you find your imaginary fancy sports car, but I'm going to flag down the nearest law officer to have you arrested for vagrancy and for murder of my time. Now get away from me so I can drive my real car. Ay, what vile words. You're a cruel man, Jorge Wilberforce. A cruel, 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 cruel man. In the place where your heart should be is some kind of dark, sucking hole of malice and greed, and most likely, congenital heart disease. I curse you, George. You don't scare me, you old hag. I'm protected from curses by my money and my healthy belief in nothing. Do your worst. I curse you, Jorg, with the worst curse that anyone who curses has ever been cursed. You pride yourself on your sharp claws and your sharp money and your sharp mind. But from this day forward, you'll have an old woman's curse. You'll never know where anything is ever again. Forever cursed to fumble around your pocket like a blind, dumb, ugly kid. Ugly? You've gone too far now, Miss Myerskoff. Now I understand it's ungentlemanlike to strike an old woman, but no one said anything about kicking brittle shins and making you eat dirt. I have spoken, Jörg. Your threats of violence mean nothing to me. 
but I would rather you not follow them up. Aganessa, you scared the mozzarella out of me. You have to be careful leaving a Ferrari attended in this neighborhood. Now, Harry, you are going to miss the 2 p.m. matinee and the star is born. They say they'll never remake that one. Oh, coming, Puluccio. Oh, sir, if you see uh, Jorge Wilbefer 3, tell him he's cursed for life and that he will suffer for all time and until a very ironic fate befalls him. Goodbye. Cantankerous old women and their stupid curses. I should have voted Prop 87 to have them removed from the streets. Well, no use wasting any more valuable money-making time of thinking about it. Time to drive my as fancy sports car around town. Wait, wait a minute. Where's my car keys? I know it should be in my front right pocket, or, or was it the left? No, George, it was in my left back pocket. No, it's not there either. Cursed. No, no, that's just ridiculous. Science has proven curses only affect the poor and the Irish. No, I must, I must have left the keys in my office. No matter, it's a beautiful day. I might as well save some gas money and walk over to my villa for lunch. Curse Schmerz. Well, listeners, it seems our protagonist, George Wilberforth, has found himself taking his first steps into the dark, 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 one more dark passages of the slanted hallway. Next stop, an untimely but ironic fate. Next stop, that doesn't really make any sense. He's not taking his first steps onto a bus or something. And takes scheduled stops on a specific route. Who wrote this tripe? Oh, here it is. My son-in-law wrote this thing. Well, sorry, sweetie, but it looks like Greg is going to have to return to his former bus driving job because there's no place for him here at the slanted hallway. And if that wasn't clear, Greg, you're fired. Well, I know one sure-fired way to cure sadness, with a barbecue. And with Harmony's drinkable lighter fluid, there's no better way to light up a grill. Harmony's special family recipe is proven in a blind taste test to be three times more drinkable than the average lighter fluid on the market. Harmony's, remember to look for the bottle with a large Italian woman saying, Now that's a spicy fluid for starting fires and drinking. Well, I'm not a fan of barbecue, so I believe this sadness might be permanent. So thank you, sponsor, and thank you, listeners, for sticking around. Let us return to George Wilberforth trying to live his new post-cursed life. Normally, unfortunately for George, curses don't make life easier. Let us bear witness to the twisted fate that awaits him down the slanted hallway. And I assure you, it's a very twisted ending. I honestly hope you're sitting down, because when this thing hits, it's going to hit. Make sure you're not drinking anything either while listening, because when the twist lands, you'll definitely be spitting out your beverage in surprise. Folks, I'm just saying, there's a chance you will shout, NO WAY, at the end of this thing to a room of loved ones, or worse, NO ONE. Alright, so you're prepared now. I've done my job. Well now, this is just getting plain ridiculous. How is it possible I forgot my keys to my car and my villa in my office? I knew I had them on me when I left. They were both in my pockets. But which ones? Do these pants have pockets? No, no, I am just tired. Tired from a lack of calories. Yes, I worked too hard dictating orders to that boob butterman. I should fire that imbecile for not reminding me that I get hungry. I should see when I get back to my office if I can get my hands on his permanent record. I'm definitely going to mark up that thing with a lot of black and red marks. All this talk about punishing an employee is giving me an appetite. Might as well grab something to eat from the town here. Hot dogs! Hot dogs! Hot! 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 Dogs! With new improved formula, less pig, more secret ingredient, hot dogs! Ah yes, a hot dog would be the perfect pick-me-up for my bizarre mental doldrums. Good day to you, Meat Vendor. And, and good day to you, man of considerable heaving wealth. Now, now, my Meat Man, that flattery won't help get you anywhere, especially in my company. I'm so sorry, sir. I have a bad habit of complimenting random folks on their appearance and wealth index. Now, uh, how can I help you? 
Yes, yes, I require one of your more refined hearted of dogs, thank you. With lots of rich fixins and relish, of course. One dirty willy coming up, pal. Uh, here you go, that'll be 57 cents. 57 cents? Well, hopefully you have enough change there to break a $500 bill. Oh, uh, oh, I don't. Well, let's just see then. My wallet is, is in one of these pockets, but which one? Okay, that's a penny. Oh, no, that's just dense lint. Uh, hey, pal, uh, what's the hold up here? I don't have time for your disappearing wallet trick. But, but if you know, if you had like a card trick, I'd love to see that, or, or maybe the one with the rings. Officer, officer, over here! I found the man who accosted me! He's over there by that gross hot dog vendor! Hey, my name isn't Vendor, it's Voloens. All right, all right, let's clear all this commotion here. I'm the law officer of the law. First off, that's not a real name. And second, are you sure, Mrs. Mabel, this is the man who stole all 39 of those pies from your window sill? I'm certain it is! I could never forget a face like his. Pink hills, short snout, round of cheek, that smell of ham. He looked like all those political cartoons in the Sunday paper, but instead of bags of money, he's running off with my pies. This is completely outrageous. I've never met this woman in my life, or her probably delicious freshly made pies. They would probably go great with a bit of cream on top too, I assume. Maybe a tall glass of milk as well. Good lord, I didn't realize how hungry I am right now. Besides, do you people even know who I am? I'm George Wilberforth III. I have more money than the King of Constantinople. That's it's tampable. And if that's true, fella, and you say you're THE George Wilberforth III, and not some pig in a suit, then let's see some photo ID. I am a lawman, after all. So it'll have to be government issued. Certainly, let it be known that THE George Wilberforth III is an upstanding American citizen and always cooperates with the authorities. Well, maybe except that one time I paid the Pinkertons to rough up some lawmen. They were looking into some of my labor practices, yes. Wait, my wallet, it's gotta be in one of these pockets. I never would forget where my wallet is, but but which pocket? No, no, that's impossible. George Wilberforth never forgets anything, especially where he puts his wall. All right, all right, pal. I've seen and heard enough. You're coming downtown to the police station where I work with me. You have the right to remain silent, George. This can't be happening. I'll report you. I know the chief of police, John M John Murph. No, that's not it. What was his name? Who? What's happening to me? I don't know, but it sounds like you're experiencing some kind of ironic twist of fate. And I told you to be silent, and I'm a cop, so you better shut up. Ow! ow stop! Ow! <laughs> George Wilberforth. Oh, merciful heaven, yes, I'm George. Your bill has been posted. Finally, a respite from this hellish and unjust imprisonment. See you later, fellas. Bye, George. Bye, George. Hey, bye, George. My darling foreign wife must have heard what happened and came down as soon as she could to save her beloved. Butterman, what are you doing here? You're not my wife, nor would I ask you to be my wife. I'm, I'm sorry, but unfortunately your wife didn't pay your bail. I did, out of loyalty. Working for you all these years, sir, it's been an honor... Shut your butthole, Butterman, and tell me what the blazes happened to my... Uh, Estonian... My... What happened to my wife? Uh, well, that, yes, I'm so sorry, sir, but news traveled quickly that George Wilberforth III was a pie thief, and more damning, associated with hot dog vendors. When your wife found out, she promptly filed for divorce, moved to the Swiss Alps, and married an even richer banker out of shame. Also, she put up your children for adoption. Unrelated, she said she really wanted a fresh start. This, this can't be real. Why would my beloved ma... It, it, it's, Martin? It, it's, ma it's Martha, sir. And, and moreover, well, I'm not sure how to tell you this either, but when the board found out about the divorce and your crimes against pies, they voted unanimously to kick you out as president of the company. On top of all of this, sir, the publisher called, and they're no longer interested in printing an autobiography about a broke loser, 
unless you change it to a fiction or put a spaceman in there. I, I was thinking of new titles like Captain Wilberforce in the Third Dimension, or... That's a terrible title, Butterman. It should be called The Grand Adventures of Captain Wilberforce in Space. Uh, right again, sir. Oh, it doesn't matter, Butterman. My life is totally undone. I lost my family, my money, and my mental nerve. Damn that Agnes and her memory-based curses. I truly am an empty shell of the man I used to be. Oh, why, sir, that's not true. By golly, if we put our heads together, I believe uh, together we can find some way to get you out of this hellhole. I'm here to help you until the end. Out of my way, Butterman. Can't you see I'm trying to abandon all hope here on my own? You're fired! Now, where was I? Oh, yes, I have nothing left. No, wait. There's one thing that can still give me comfort in this cruel, hopeless, insane world. Finally. Made it back to my old executive office. They haven't thrown out my things yet. Thank goodness. They mustn't then have got... They mustn't then have had the chance to get rid of my personal safe with my most prized possession. My bejeweled yo-yo. That old woman's curse may have taken everything from me, but surely fate can't take this precious item from me now. Aha! Now just to enter in the combination on the safe. Three or... Wait, no, it was two... <laughs> no, 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 it's not fair! It's impossible! Damn you, Agnes Myerscoff! Damn you to hell for cursing me with the... Oh, dang it, I can't remember that either now. Can fate turn any more cruel on George Wilberforce? Oh, no, a banana peel! I'm definitely allergic! Ah! Important police work needs to be done here, and we don't need you folks mucking up any of it. Now where's the body? You're standing in what's left of him there, Detective Matthews. Oh, jeez, my favorite pair of flip-flops ruined. Oh, well. What's the story on this living impaired fella? Natural causes. When a man falls from a couple stories to his death, I think the medical term is called pancaked. Hey, maybe not. We just got the autopsy report from the coroner. Uh, apparently, this guy's brain swelled up to the size of two larger than more baseballs, which the doc says could have affected his cognitive reasoning. The man's brain turned on him and must have forced him out that window. At least that's our running story. We currently have the brain in lockup awaiting further questioning. The poor cheeser! I tell you, fellas, there's nothing sadder than the man's own brain turning on him. Maybe in death, he can find some peace and some quiet dignity. Photo for the paper, boys, and then one for the officers. Pause his corpse so he looks like he's laughing. Well, there you have it, dear listeners, the tragic end of George Wilberforce III's story, and for some reason it had nothing to do with the supernatural, which is something I did not see coming, nor did I wholly agree to. His brain was too big, and that doesn't make sense one way or the other. Big brains mean big smarts. Who wrote this trash again? All right, my son-in-law. Well, you can't fire a person twice in a row, but why not? Greg, you're really fired but I'm still excited for Sunday night dinner with you and Susan because that can't be canceled now. Tune in next week, listeners, for the next thrilling episode of The Slanted Hallway, where a man travels forward in time but forgets his watch so he doesn't know exactly how far he's traveled in time, and when he asks everyone what time it is, they're all really rude to him and then he realizes he's a toy soldier in hell. Now that's a Slanted Hallway for you folks. Good night. Greg, get over here. I want to berate you more and ask you what your other job prospects are too.